being a unit still at the, at the noon briefing. As you said, I will start with a few, some opening uh, remarks. Uh, after more than a year of exchanges of fire between Hezbollah and Israel, tensions have surged dramatically in the past few weeks, transforming the hostilities into a more lethal and intense uh, conflict. Uh, according to the Lebanese Ministry of Public Health, uh, the death toll in Lebanon since uh, October last year has reached over 2,700 people and the number of wounded to over 12,700. Around 25% women and children, more than 2,000 deaths have occurred since uh, 23 September of this year. More than 800,000 people have been forced out of their homes and communities, 60% of them from the area in which Unifil operates, uh, operates in South Lebanon, according to the International Organization for Migration. So, uh, statistics like this cannot fully uh, capture uh, the human cost of conflict and it's the civilians who continue to uh, suffer. Uh, peacekeepers are working hard behind the scenes to coordinate the safe passage of essential humanitarian aid by UN agencies and local international NGOs. Uh, contingents have continued to support uh, local uh, communities through projects and donations to help those who have continued to stay in their homes. In a strange situation, we also have helped uh, to evacuate uh, civilians trapped in conflict uh, areas. Uh, and these conflict areas are becoming much more uh, dangerous as the number of intensity of shells and, uh, and airstrikes uh, uh, launched has grown. Uh, we're also witnessing hundreds of uh, trajectories and sometimes more crossing the blue line each day. Uh, peacekeepers are also reporting daily clashes on the ground. Uh, uh, despite the increasing challenges and uh, IDF demands to move from position close to the blue line, we continue to monitor and report on what is happening on the ground, mostly from our observations, posts and positions, as most patrols have been suspended until things uh, improve. Since the 1st of October, Unifil has recorded over 30 incidents, resulting in damage to UN property or premises or injuring to, to uh, peacekeepers. About 20 of those we could attribute to IDF fire or actions, with seven being clearly deliberate. Uh, in an incident yesterday, a, rockly, a rocket sorry, likely uh, fired by Hezbollah or uh, affiliated group. It's Unifil headquarters in Nakura and setting a vehicle workshop on fire, with some peacekeepers suffering uh, minor injuries. Uh, for about a dozen of other incidents, uh, the origin of fire could not be uh, determined. Uh, what has been very concerning are incidents where peacekeepers are performing their monitoring tasks as well as our cameras, lighting and entire watchtowers have been uh, deliberately uh, targeted. Uh, to be clear, uh, the actions of both uh, IDF and Hezbollah are putting peacekeepers in danger whether through crossfire or deliberate uh, acts. Uh, despite the very tense situation, Unifil continues to stay in contact with Lebanese and Israeli authorities, urging de-escalation. Our message to them is clear, recommit to Resolution 1701 in action and not just uh, words. It is to, for them to implement 1701. Unifil's role is and has always been to support implementation and monitor and report uh, violations, which we have uh, faithfully and consistently done through our thorough and regular reporting to the Security Council. Uh, despite all that has happened, we still believe uh, that uh, with the party's commitment, we can, back to, we can go back to stability, and the Resolution 1701 is the framework uh, to get there. Uh, peacekeepers uh, are ready to support any action or agreement uh, that we help uh, uh, achieve that. Uh, thank you, Stefan. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Andre, we'll take some questions. Uh, Valeria Rubeco, answer. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tenenti, for this uh, press conference on behalf of the United Nations Correspondent Association. It's Valeria Rubeco from ANSA. Uh, my question is, uh, Italy said uh, uh, several times that the UN mission in Lebanon needs revised uh, rule of engagement uh, uh, to be more effective uh, and more power in the future. So do you think a change in the UNIFIL mandate uh, in the rule of engagement uh, uh, is a, realistic, a realistic possibility? Thank you so much. Go ahead, Andrea. 
Yes, at the moment, the rules of engagements are adequate to the situation on the ground, and any uh, change to the mission's uh, mandate or to the resolution will need to get uh, uh, the approval of the Security Council. So we are here to implement uh, uh, the mission's mandate, but any changes will be up to the, to the Security Council. At the moment, uh, the rules of engagement that have been used have been uh, adequate uh, to the situation on the ground. Thank you. Edie? Uh, thank you very much, Andrea. Uh, Edith Lettera from the Associated Press. Um, on the deliberate attacks against UNIFIL carried out by the Israelis, um, have they diminished? Are they increasing? And um, what what is the Israeli government saying or doing about them. And I know in one case, um, one of your observation posts was toppled. Um, has it been put upright again? Thanks. Oh, thank you. Thank you again. Yes, some of the positions have been uh, uh, reinforced, uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, and some of the uh, areas and the perimeters of uh, the base has also been reinforced. Uh, as you said, we had several uh, uh, deliberate attacks uh, uh, against the, 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 the mission because it's pretty visible that some of the targeting, especially the one against one of the tower in Nakura uh, from uh, Markava tanks, was hitting the, 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 the tower where two peacekeepers were, were injured. Uh, another two examples were where uh, uh, drones enter almost close inside uh, the, one of the bunkers where peacekeepers uh, were sheltering. Another two were hitting uh, the, the cameras. So these are all uh, attacks that we've been very vocal about, uh, about deliberate attacks, and even the Security Council and the international community has been vocal about it, which is a, re a violation of 1701, but also a violation of international uh, humanitarian law. In relation to the answer of IDF, uh, I understand that we're still investigating this, uh, this incident, but again, uh, it's uh, an obligation of the parties to ensure uh, security of, uh, of, of, uh, of, our, of our peacekeepers. And have have you seen the number of deliberate attacks um, staying about the same, going up, going down? Well, I would say that in recent days, I think the last one was uh, uh, a week a week ago. Uh, at this point, of course, uh, uh, we are concerned about all the attacks against uh, peacekeepers and the continued shelling that we see uh, from both uh, from both sides. Uh, we continue to remain in our positions. We remain in, in the south of Lebanon monitoring the situation and reporting to the, to the Security Council. So our activities have been definitely challenged and, uh, and uh, our also patrolling activities, as I mentioned during my opening remarks, uh, uh, have been uh, uh, limited. Uh, but we still continue to assist uh, uh, UN agencies also to bring humanitarian assistance to, to the local population. There are still thousands of people stuck in villages without uh, having access to the most uh, uh, basic needs. This has also been challenging to bring assistance to the local populations. But we continue to monitor and we continue to be present and do as much as we can uh, to carry out uh, uh, our activities. Thank you. Um, Margaret? Hi, Andrea. It's Margaret Bashir from Voice of America. Um, I just, uh, following up on that, how many people do you estimate are still left in South Lebanon in your area of um, operation as civilians? And uh, what's your response to those, particularly in Israel, who are repeatedly criticizing UNIFIL for not having implemented 1701 for the past 20 years? Yeah, okay. In terms of numbers, what uh, has been reported by International Organization for Migrations, uh, uh, around uh, 500,000 uh, people have left uh, the south of Lebanon. The population in the south is around uh, uh, 600,000 people. When I say south, uh, uh, meaning the area of operation of UNIFIL, from the Litani River uh, to, the, to the Blue Line. So uh, the vast majority of uh, the population in the south uh, uh, have left and there are still people living in, living in this day. So it's still a very uh, a dramatic situation because most villages have been completely uh, uh, destroyed and, uh, and the, the shelling is, is continuing. In relation to some of the 
of the criticism of uh, Unifil not implementing uh, the mandate. The, the mandate has to be implemented by, by the parties. Uh, Unifil is here to support the parties in the implementation of, uh, of, of the mandate. So we need the commitment uh, of the parties in order to implement uh, Resolution 1701, which still remain the main framework and the, the only viable solutions to, uh, to, to this conflict. We've been reporting uh, thoroughly all the uh, violation that we have seen in, uh, in, in the Arab operation for the last 18 years. And also to go back to that, from 2006 until October last year, the south of Lebanon had witnessed one of its quietest period in recent history. It doesn't mean that resolution was implemented. There was still a work to be done. But uh, uh, this is a very difficult uh, area with a lot of sensitivities. But we have been able to uh, prevent uh, uh, some of the uh, exchanges of fire. We have been working with the parties on a monthly basis. We had a monthly meeting between IDF and Lebanese Army, which was the most uh, important confidence big building mechanism. We were working on uh, uh, adjusting or working on the last outstanding points along the blue line uh, to mark, to visibly mark the blue line. Working with the Lebanese army, of course, there is a need for more Lebanese army to come to the south of Lebanon. But a lot of work was done during those 18 years. And as I said, implementation was still not there. But again, the implementation is not up to the mission, but it's up to the, to, to, to the, to the, to the parties. And if I could just follow up, uh, you talked about the villages, uh, many villages being uh, destroyed or damaged. Could you just give us uh, a little idea of what the, the UNIFIL troops have seen during their patrols, like how extensive is the damage in the south? I mean, is it total? Is it, how, how dramatic is it? Pretty dramatic. As I said, our, our monitoring capabilities have been limited, but in recent days, we also have been able to go out and, uh, and work on some of the roads that uh, uh, were not uh, accessible until, uh, until yesterday. So villages very close to the blue line, I would say three, four, five kilometers from the blue line, are uh, you know, completely destroyed. There are areas like Aferkila, Marwahin, uh, uh, Marun Arras, Yarun. Many villages have been uh, very heavily damaged or completely destroyed. So uh, the situation is pretty dramatic. And in recent days, yesterday also, the day before, the city of, of Tyr, of Sur, uh, has been uh, uh, badly damaged, hit and, and bombed uh, in areas uh, uh, close to uh, downtown and, uh, and other residential areas. So uh, damages and destruction is pretty evident and, uh, and, and, and dramatic. Ken Abdelhamid. Thank you for the briefing. It's Pamela Falk from U.S. News and World Report. The U.S. has supported and sort of drafted and Israel is considering a 60-day ceasefire um, in the region. Has UNIFIL, have you been contacted on how that would work? And what is your view of um, moving forward on that? Thank you. Well, uh, UNIFIL is in constant uh, contact with, uh, with the parties, uh, uh, IDF, Lebanese authorities, and talking to the diplomatic communities. So the channel of communication is open. But of course, uh, the negotiations is up to not to, to, to UNIFIL. We are ready to uh, support any uh, um, agreement that can bring back uh, stability uh, to, to, the, to the south of Lebanon. Again, uh, what we have been saying repeatedly, that uh, a diplomatic and, uh, and uh, a political solution is the only solution. There is no military solution to this conflict. Uh, military activities can only bring short-term solutions, but we really need to go back to the negotiating tables. But as I said, we are in touch with the parties. A lot of uh, uh, discussion has been ongoing, but uh, I, we have no information on that. And there are a lot of reports, but also a lot of speculations on, uh, on, on the situation uh, on the ground and upcoming decisions. To the 1701 question, I think Valeria mentioned it. It's been in uh, operating in the breach for two decades or over um, a decade. And what is why do you think it'll work now? 
Well, the, the thing, as I said, there is the need for the implementation, full implementation of 1701. This resolution has been heavily challenged by the main provisions of uh, security, stability, uh, support for the Lebanese army, long-term solution is still there. Uh, uh, we still believe that is the main framework, and uh, but again, it's not up to us, it's up to the commitment of the parties. But the main elements of deployment of Lebanese army uh, to the south of Lebanon, uh, ensuring there are no weapons in the south of Lebanon, working on all the outstanding points along the blue lines, they're all important and, uh, and provisions that, uh, uh, that are still very valid right now. So we still believe that uh, the framework is the framework that should be used to find a solution to this conflict. Thank you. Thank you.